Hey car fans, my name is Tom and this is my Porsche 911 restoration project. This video is going to be all about the weld in roll cage. Now I had never done a roll cage prior to this one. So this video is going to show the entire journey from beginner to finished product. And I hope this shows you what's involved in case you want to do something similar to your car. Now, a big disclaimer, this was not done in a day. Garage time. Once the back of the car was cleared out, I started with some basic tools, just a protractor, a level, and a tape measure. Okay, here I'm starting with the main hoop. Now, this is not the actual tubing to be used for the roll cage. This is electrical conduit, and I'm using this as a mock-up because I had never done this before. So I was afraid to bend the real tubing. This was a great start. Almost all the rule books state that the roll bar of the main hoop needs to be at least six inches from your head. Here it's a little bit close in this picture, but I was able to reach the six inch dimension when the seat is in its fully rear position. Just duplicating the shape for the other side, you can see the actual roll bar tubing is just behind me next to the front tire. Because electrical conduit is galvanized and it's difficult to weld or it's dangerous to weld, I'm soaking it in muriatic acid here. It just eats away the, the coating and gives you bare metal to weld. The swimming pool noodle really emulates the overall diameter of the roll bar tubing. I'm just checking clearance with the car and making sure that it doesn't interfere with the roof. Now I'm not gonna use a headliner in this car, but if I did, I would need to account for that. Okay, now it's time to make the actual main hoop out of the steel that I tend to use, inch and a half steel. Here are the different bend dies for the JD squared bender. I arrived at one that was inch and a half by four and a half inch radius. A few tweaks needed since the conduit was a six inch bend radius. I started all my measurements from the center line of the tubing and I worked my way out to the ends. Here's a test bend. I found a 7 8 offset between the mark and where the bend starts. The JD squared bender is sort of a ratcheting bender, so it has a lot of power over a short distance. So each time you make a pull, you readjust the, the, the ratchet and then you pull it again to just keep going until you get to the right angle. There is a protractor built in, so I'm looking at the protractor and making sure it matches with my mock-up. The link is in the description below. Use a level on the first bend to make sure there's no twist in the main hoop. I used a bender at a community workshop. Now I'm at home. No tubing was wasted in the manufacture of the main hoop, which was great. Now it's time for the diagonal bar. I did use a piece of string and just looked in my rear view mirror to make sure I was happy with the placement. I don't have a tubing notcher, so I'm gonna mark the tubing, create a line parallel to the tubing you wanna notch to. You go up a third of the diameter and then you draw a triangle. But if you don't have a bandsaw, you could just use a cutoff wheel on an angle grinder too. This is the fish mouth fit. I just tuned it up a little bit with my die grinder and bench grinder, but it worked out great. I did practice my TIG welding, getting my welder dialed in. I ended up using about 110 amps. And then I also cut a section in half to look at the penetration. The rule book gives you the number of square inches that the base plates need to be where it attaches to your car. I'm just modifying the shape of the base plates 
so it mates up better with the actual car. And put a little radius on the, on the side. Now that it's in the car, I'm just tack welding the base plates to the main hoop. So I cut an access hole in my firewall to attach the rear diagonals directly to the coil over shock turrets. Now I'm back at the workshop again, making the harness bar. Another advantage of a weld-in roll bar is you're able to tie it into the roof structure of the car. So I'm making this gusset plate that takes the B-pillar and attaches it directly to the roll cage. I probably should have put the dimples in first and then cut it. But now that it's flat, it fits the car really well. These tabs are for some removable door bars that I intend to put in the car. And I'm spraying epoxy primer over the entire roll bar before I weld it in the car. These areas are really tough to spray once it's in the car. You can make a cardboard template like I did. This is for the attachment point for the diagonal bars where they attach to the A-pillar. I wanted my bars to be removable for street and track use. Getting in and out is not that easy. Maybe it's gonna be easier with the actual seat, we'll see. Here's the finished product with everything painted. Came out really nice. This is the access cover put back in place. I just need to create a little rubber seal to go around the roll bar tubing. And there you have it, that's the roll cage from start to finish. If you're interested in seeing more videos on how I did more of the detail here, there's an entire playlist on how I created the roll cage. This took me several weeks, but I learned a lot 